Welcome back to the channel. Today I did something that I probably haven't done in years. I used the index of a textbook to find a page of a topic I was looking for. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. In today's video, we're going to discuss the ANOVA. And this is part of the series I'm undertaking to show how we can do a lot of our fundamental measurement science or analytical chemistry that used to be done in Excel or whatever language it was taught in and advance that into an open source language like Python. And so in the last video, I demonstrated this for t-test. And now I want to demonstrate this same approach for an ANOVA. The t-test is generally used when comparing two means. And now the ANOVA is a more generalized version where we can compare three or more means in a number of different ways. And in this case, I demonstrate two techniques, one that looks at the overall similarity and the other that takes a pairwise assessment and gives us that P value back. Let's get started. This data is going to come from the same data set I showed from the t-test. I'm just going to adapt it a tiny bit. But in short, this data collected to determine if there is a chemical difference based on a fertile field and a non-fertile field or less fertile field. In the first video, we looked at the t-test comparing all of these values for the field one and field two. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the ANOVA and how we can take this analysis of variance approach and I'm going to simulate a slightly different question just to make this a little bit more relevant, but we can extend this for this type of analytical study as well. So imagine you have a study or you're, you're starting a new study and you have multiple different analysts that are going to be on board and you want to ensure that they're all taking the same measurement. So you, in a way, perform a calibration to ensure that if they were to measure these five samples, they would get the same mean and have the same approximate variance. And this is critical because you don't want to accidentally introduce some sort of bias due to sample handling or a non-calibrated balance. And so this is a very powerful approach for that sort of thing. And you can imagine there's many other ways where this type of analysis can be very important. And so in this case, I'm going to take just one column, the, the organic matter column, and I'm going to sample from it to simulate five different analysts performing 10 different measurements. And I'm going to use this random choice out of this column. I'm not going to replace the value. So once that value is sort of pulled from the bag, it's no longer available for the rest of the pools. And we're going to create a five by 10 array. And this will represent analyst A through E or, or five separate groups of measurements. We transpose this, create it into a data frame and call that data frame measurement. So let's take a look at the data. You see that we have our five columns, A through E, and we have 10 measurements in each of the columns. So the first thing you might want to do is visualize this data. And one great approach is a strip plot using Seaborn. So simply Seaborn.strip plot. And the argument that we will need is the data argument equals measurement. And because our data frame is already structured in a way, we don't need to pass any other variables in. And you see that we have our five different measurements and it's pretty clear to see how the measurements are spread across for each of the five categories. And so this can simulate five analysts or five different instruments or whatever you want to do that you want to compare to see, are these essentially the same when we can consider the mean and the variance within the sample and then across the entire study. So generally you might approach this by taking the measurement and computing the mean value. And you see that the mean does shift a tiny bit. The lowest mean is 21.8. The highest mean appears to be 28. However, this mean value alone doesn't tell us enough about if this data overlaps or not. So another way we might be able to get at this visually is to use a box plot. And so just as simply as we computed the strip plot, let's do a box plot as in the data equals measurement. And here we do see that across these five different studies, they all have considerable overlap. So visually, we might then assert that these samples are essentially the same, despite their slightly different mean values. In this, however, is where ANOVA comes in. So what I want to do now is take this measurement data frame and split it back up into five different arrays so that I can then pass it to the ANOVA method. So to do this, we can unpack it. And the first thing we really want to do is select the values, which will now sort of strip this back to a NumPy array. And then I want to reshape this array to be a five by 10 array. So to do this, we use the reshape method and pass in our shape here. So it's just five by 10. And you see that now we have a new structure and then we can unpack this into the variables we want. So this is a very convenient way to get that data back out. 
we run this, you can see that now we have our single array of data. So from here, we can run our ANOVA. So ANOVA will come from the stats library. So using the stats alias, let's just call stats.f one way. And we will just pass in our samples. When you see this asterisk, we could just pass in each group and run our test. So like the t-test I showed in the last video, the output is a tuple with two values. First is the test statistic, and the second is the p-value. And in this case, it appears that these means are all likely from the same distribution. We don't have any significance with this p-value here, assuming a 95% confidence interval. However, what if we did have a sample that's distinctly different from the rest? Or what if we wanted to do a pairwise assessment where we compare A versus B, B versus C, A versus C, and so on for the entire set? How would we do that? The next thing I want to do is make one of these variables different. So let's make a variable called F. And F will equal A plus 25. And so it'll add 25 to all the values of A. And if we run this, you see that F is now much larger. If you compare these values with this figure here, you see F is now much larger. Now, let's run this test again and add F to it. If we add F, you see not only the test statistic changes, however, the p-value also changes. And now we have a very small p-value. We have 3 e to negative 15. And this tells us that all the means are not the same. However, it doesn't necessarily tell us which one is the standout. We could assert this visually. However, I want to show you how we can now take a second adaptation of this ANOVA called a Turkey HSD and get to this conclusion. So to do that, also from the stats module, let's run Turkey HSD and we will pass in our arguments. So A, B, C, D, E, and F. And when we do this, we'll get this output here. And this should tell you that we need to do more to actually look through this argument. So let's just store this as res or results. Let's just call it results. And we'll run that again. And let's print the results. So in this pairwise assessment, we now see on the leftmost margins, we have zero, which is equivalent to A being compared to B, C, D, E, and F. However, we can see when A is compared to B through E, we don't have significance. However, when compared to F, we do, we have a very small p-value, and when shown only to three decimal places, it appears as zero. The other thing you can notice is that the confidence interval doesn't cross zero. This is another telltale sign that we have significantly different values. Most of these others, all these others rather, should cross zero. And when we have that zero point, that tells you that there is some overlap, and thus we cannot confidently assert that they're significantly different. So here we have a way to perform a pairwise assessment of all these mean values using Python and in a way that we can quickly implement on a number of different studies and just build the digital framework for this type of analysis. So over the course of the past couple of videos now, I've shown you how we can compare two means using a t-test and three or more means using either the ANOVA or a Turkey HSD pairwise assessment. So I'll continue maybe over the next video to showing some other fundamental statistical methods such as the F-test and others as I continue to walk through this foundations of analytical chemistry. And you'll see how these fundamental tools sort of build up the many of the machine learning algorithms that we use today. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. If there's something else you want to see or another test you want me to demonstrate, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.